I was pleasantly surprised to learn recently that you designed the cover of Total self-titled debut. Uh, are there any, or are there one or two other uh, album covers that you're particularly proud of that you want to talk about? Well, I when you commented on that one, I was like, that's you? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's, that's the beauty of Instagram. Sometimes I can't help myself. And no, I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I have to say something, but um, that, that was uh, one of those moments where you know, I have a long-standing relationship with Sean Combs and the Bad Boy family. And, mm -hmm. and so getting an opportunity to work on that, you know, it was a lot of fun because, you know, that was, you know, back in the day. And Puff and I go way, way back. But um, he's always sort of entrusted me and, and you know, my, my former partner, Steve Carr, with you know, his record company and his, his legacy. And, you know, we don't take those things lightly, just mm -hmm. getting an opportunity to work on those projects and certainly, you know, things like Notorious B.I.G. It, it's, it's like, you know, even thinking about it now, I get goosebumps, but at the time, you know, I didn't really know that it was going to be anything that anybody would care about. And, and here we are all these years later celebrating. Mm -hmm. Right, when that album came out total, I wasn't like looking at who did the art or who like wrote the songs. I was just like, oh, they're singing them. That's how it is. So it's nice yeah. that people can get recognition whether or not it's at the time that it comes out. Um, I see my but, buddy, uh, Zeph Farm be on here. I want to say what's up to him. You know, I have so it. many, you know, of my artist friends that are constantly supporting and doing amazing work. And I, I think during this time in particular, it's nice to know that folks are out there because over the last, you know, four months or whatever, I haven't heard from a lot of people. And, you know, once in a while, I'm lucky enough to bump into people in the street. Um, but it's good to see people coming out to check out your show. And so I just wanted to... It's also nice to see you highlighting a lot of people on your Instagram, though, because I've noticed you've posted a lot of, like, you need yeah. to know who this person is. They're, they're dope. <laughs> well, you know... I, I am a firm believer in sort of sharing information. Perfect example, Futura Industries. Um, I saw him jump on. Futura's got a really on it. They do a great job of sort of unifying the culture. And I think that that is one of those things that's really important. And um, for me, that's what it's all about at this stage in my career. Um, just sort of connecting those dots and, and sort of, you know, showing young people how things were done, what it was like when we were coming up and we were young back in the 80s and just sort of reminding them that they can do it too. But paying it forward is something that's really, really important. I got to see Timothy interview Futura not too long ago in, this, in Brooklyn. <laughs> She's another one. You know, Timothy's <laughs> of a younger generation, but she understands the power of that earlier movement. And it's really cool to see her out now sort of doing things like this and, and sort of, you know, bridging that gap because she's a historian, so she understands the journey. Mm -hmm. But if you're somebody that was there and you can still tell your story in real time, that's great. And that was, you know, the reason that I decided to do your show because there's so many of my friends that are not around anymore that don't mm -hmm. get an opportunity to, you know, not only tell their story, but to, you know, have people even know who they are. And these are the people that paved the way for everybody that's doing, you know, quote unquote, you know, making art today. Like none of these young people understand why they pick up a can of spray paint. Right. You know, it's because of a lot of these people that had this idea, you know, 40, 50 years ago. And here mm -hmm. we are all these years later. Yeah, that was one of the things Timothy said during our interview. She's like, we need to highlight the people while they're still here. Yeah. yeah. Um, which project from any point in your career changed the most from beginning to end? Like you went in thinking it would be one thing, but it ended up being something completely different. You know, I, I, I don't know that I have a solid answer for that because there, there's always drama that comes along with anything and you know what actually you know there's certainly been situations where i've done something and just thought it was another day at the office and, and just sort of you know like 
did it, didn't think about it, you know, you're in the moment. Mary J. Blige, what's the 411 was one of those. You know, mm -hmm. I meet Mary, she's all of 18, 19, maybe. You know, she comes from Mount Vernon. She shows mm -hmm. up in New York City, small studio, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't have a lot of questions. She sits on her mark, literally does what she's told to do. We take the photographs. My team and I go back into the studio and we create the graphics for her album. You know, I didn't think much about it beyond loving the music mm -hmm. and she might not have either other than it being her first record. And here we are, you know, damn near probably 25 years later and she's a global superstar. And I bet you she remembers that moment like it was yesterday because it was that important. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're right. Um, your name is rarely mentioned without the word legendary preceding it. Do you feel the meaning of that word has changed at all for you over the years? Um, not for me. I, you know, what I have an issue is with somebody calling somebody a legend that's been around for 10 years. Right. You know, like, you have to, that, that <laughs> word is reserved for somebody that has put a lifetime of work into what they do. A mm -hmm. lifetime. You know, not a 20 year lifetime, not a 25 year lifetime. Talk to me when you put mm -hmm. 40 to 50 years of work into something, mm -hmm. then you can start throwing around those titles. And that's the unfortunate thing about what young people don't understand. And, and you know, they use this a lot in social media. It's sort of a way of glorifying people. Why can't you just say that they're great? Why can't you just say that they're amazing? You, you know, even an icon, like, mm -hmm. you know, really? If you are, the, how come nobody knows who you are? You yeah. know, if, if you and put in that kind of work, you should be able to tap a 50-year-old on the shoulder and go, oh, have you ever heard of so-and-so? Boom. Mm -hmm. You know, Milton Glaser was, you know, like 91. That's what a legend is. Mm -hmm. That's what a legend is. Right, because if you keep using it for people that aren't really one, you're cheapening. They don't know. You know, it, it's okay. It's okay because, you know, they'll fall by the wayside. And, you know, the person that's putting in the work that's not walking around, patting themselves on the back or, right. you know. <laughs> Brushing them off, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 you got to put in the work, period. I agree. I'm kind of in that vein. Are there any up-and-coming artists or photographers you've taken notice of recently that we should keep an eye on? Um, wow. You know, well, I, I love what um, Zeph Barnby is doing. You know, and this is going to sound a, a little off, but, um, you know, I, I, I love what, um, you know, just uh, Logan Hicks you know, and I know Logan's not a kid, but I just love what he does. Um, you know, my buddy Cycle. Um, Wayne's work is really amazing these days. I, I think he's just getting warmed up. Oh, my goodness. Um, just, you know, so many people. Um, you know, this might be a little bit off track, but uh, Tara McPherson, I love what she does. And, you know, there's just so many people whose work I just absolutely love that, I don't get an opportunity to talk about because I'm too busy sort of making my own. But right. um, a, a, another one is um, my buddy uh, in, in Brooklyn, um, you know, who, this is like so embarrassing. Like I just said this guy's name and now all of a sudden I'm scrambling. Like, That's okay, I'm, thinking, me I'm, I'm thinking of him <laughs> and I'm, I'm scrambling to like, to come. <laughs> His name. We can come back to it if it, if you think of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's really embarrassing. Oh my goodness. Well, it's not embarrassing because no one knows if it's no, that person but, or not. You know, but but <laughs> I, 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 I know, and I know that uh, you know his name is Craig Anthony Miller, and he goes by Cam, and he's one of my uh, studio mates. He's in my building in, in Dumbo. And I absolutely love what he does. And he's got an old school aesthetic where he's always just about making work every day. And he just does it well. 
and he's one of my favorites. And I love popping into his studio for a little bit of inspiration. And he sort of looks at it the other way around, but he doesn't know that I totally dig what he does. And <laughs> same thing with Zeph, like Zeph Farmy. Man, you know, he came from Chicago. Big shout out to all my people in Chicago. Um, and he's just putting in the work and he knew in order to really make it, you gotta come to New York and, and you know, you know, that that's the way it's been for a very long time. Um, the first time I had the pleasure of seeing you speak in person was at the Museum of the City of New York uh, on the Graffiti Revolution panel with Greg LaMarche in 2014. Um, how do you feel this pandemic and possible, possible future recurrences will affect your speaking engagements or your tour? Well, I like to believe that young people are going to come out one way or another. And I also think that, you know, this is New York City. It, it, you know, this is a resilient town. We have been through worse. And mm -hmm. I believe that we will figure it out because young people are not going to stop coming out to see live music and to support artists. I think that we will figure it out the same way we're doing this we'll figure it out. I, I don't know what that is, mm -hmm. but the minute somebody creates a platform, people are going to jump on it. Look at you, you, you know, like mm -hmm. Instagram live is not even that old, but everybody's beating it, you know, hard. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, somebody's going to develop technology that will allow people to come together and, and we'll be using it. Yeah. I, I have to figure it out right now because you know, hopefully th this holiday season and next spring, we're going to be out on a book tour with um, the Smithsonian Anthology of Hip Hop and Rap. And, you know, I want to be in front of people. I want to shake people's hands and give yeah. them a hug. And, you know, and if I can't be that close, I, you know, I damn sure want to be in a room with people so they mm -hmm. can, you know, hear me talk about that project because, it took a lifetime to get here. And I think that's what's really important. Yeah, to that end, I, um, my next question is, do you think it's possible for a virtual lecture to have a comparable impact? You know, whether it's on you or the people. Well, if you would have asked me, uh, you know, a couple of months ago, I would have said no. But I think now, you know, you sort of take what you can get. And, and you know, when I saw what my friend Babyface did with uh, Teddy Riley, I, you know, I had a newfound respect for it because mm -hmm. I, I know Kenny and I know how big his heart is and I know how much time and energy he's put into everything that he does. So I, I think that it can have an impact. And I look at what my buddy Jermaine Dupree is doing. Jermaine is hitting it hard mm -hmm. and He's been out there a long, long time. Big shout out to JD. But mm -hmm. I've known him since he was a kid. And I'm so proud of him because he just keeps going. Same thing with my buddy Fahamu Peku. He's another one. Brilliant artist and just grinds, grinds. The technology changes and he just rolls with it. Nice. Uh, you posted a couple months ago about working on a new edition of catalogs to celebrate wonderful moments in your career. Can you share a bit more about that? Well, it was just um, something that I did while I was home and, and I, I sort of just missed all of my people that I was able to travel and see. And I just thought, you know what, I want to do something that reminds people that I still care about them. And so I, I just made this series of catalogs and I mailed them out to all my friends and anybody that knows me that has my personal email can email me and I'll, I'll send them, you know, a couple of copies because that's what they're for. And we were fortunate enough to find a printer that did a really great job, that's really inexpensive. And all of my people, East Coast, West Coast, North and South, they, they know, you know I, I want them to feel like we're still connected. So everybody out there that, you know, we're tight with, you know, reach out. I'd love to make sure that people have them in their hands because that's how we're gonna stay connected. Mm -hmm. Um, so kind of switching gears a little bit, um, 
Where have you found strength to respond to the unrest that has overtaken the country after the murder of George Floyd and countless others? Well, I will say this. Um, for starters, um, a couple of years back, Whoopi Goldberg came to my studio and, and we had conversations about doing the story of Emmett Till. She was doing the story of Emmett Till. I was going to, you know, put some art in it. She, she saw my black flags and she said, I'm going to try to figure out a way to make this work in my movie. And I said, look, if you can figure out a way to work it in there and have it make sense, I'm all in. And so, and that's what we were doing. And, and so, you know, every time we would talk, she's like, baby, I'm on it. Baby, I'm on it. Those flags are bad. And I was like, you know what? If you can figure it out, I'm all in. Because I, I understood what it meant. And, and when the museum opens again, you know, that's the National Museum of African American History and Culture. They have uh, sort of a, a, a makeshift grave of Emmett Till in the basement of the museum. And Emmett Till was killed in 1955. And that was a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't even like, you know, like a gleam in my parents' eye yet. Um, and it was a really emotional moment in American history, but painful, you know, nonetheless. And, and here we are all these years later after, you know, Medgar Evers, Martin Luther King, um, you know, Amadou Diallo, you know, Michael Stewart, I, I could just go on and on and on. Tamir Rice, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Freddie Gray. And it's just a horrible thing, a horrible, horrible thing. And the idea that all of these people were killed because of racial violence. And, I, you know, I just think that for me, as an artist, it's hard not to think about that and really take a minute. And, and when you go to see the Black Lives Matter mural in Brooklyn, you will see the names of all of these people that were killed at the hands of racial violence, just so people aren't confused. It's racial violence. Mm -hmm. And to paint those names is really emotionally draining. You're already on your knees and you're painting the names of all of these people that have died day in and day out. And I just had to hold it in until I would get home because you know you just couldn't get through the day. You're like swimming in paint and then all of a sudden you start thinking about the magnitude. It was, it's really difficult. Um, but the thing that I learned is that as an artist, that's my contribution to try to uplift people. When folks would come by, they all had these kind things to say. And a lot of my friends came by and they checked it out while I was working. And that was the thing that really kept me going. But, you know, the hell with me. I'm, I'm alive. I'm, I'm there painting. I'm making art. But there's somebody that's going to come by and goes, oh, that was a friend of mine. That was my cousin. So many people, they knew names on that list personally. And for me, all I could say is sorry for your loss. I mean, it, it's, you know, a collective loss for all of us, but it, it's really painful. And I think that's the one good thing about what's happening in America now is that young people are saying enough is enough. Mm -hmm. And now we want people to be held accountable. And, you know, that's what it's really all about. No justice, no peace. And it's about time we took a stand because this sort of thing shouldn't be happening over and over and over and over again. Very well said. Um, Say so thank you so much for talking with me. Is there anything else that you want to share? Or Time is up already? No, time's not up. I'm just out of questions. But if you have more than you want to Talk about. <laughs> but, 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 um, no, I don't know. I, I you know, I, I just think that 
it's really great to see people come out and support the show. And it just reminds me that this is a much bigger platform. And I think that it's really important that we find ways to communicate. And, and you know, you should have Wayne on and, you know, like, you know, Bill Barminsky, like all of these really talented artists and, you know, Amy Cinnamon. I love, I love her. Amy. <laughs> you know, I don't know her, but man, do I love her work. And I think that, you know, like, you know, I'm not saying that you should turn the show into a show that supports visual artists, but to me, these are the people that help to communicate the message. They're mm -hmm. all cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. And that's who we've morphed into at this point. We are all cheerleaders. When I look at what my, my friends are doing with their platforms, you know, people like Quest Love, um, just phenomenal. They've learned to just take that, you know, platform that they have and they just spread it around and you know that's really what matters so you know thank you for allowing me the time to talk to your audience thank you yeah just kind of to talk about what you just said i have been doing interviews for the last 10 years but they've always been either in person or recorded and i've transcribed them and typed them up and printed them online but um i really wanted to give people a platform to kind of just talk about how they were feeling because everyone's just kind of stuck at home maybe not so much now as they were a couple months ago but i'm willing to talk to anyone that wants to have a voice right now so reach well, out to me if there's you want. a lot of artists out there that you know have visual voices and you know i, I think it's, it's great to give them a place where you know they can put their words with their art and folks can hear what they have to say because you know we've all been on the journey and everybody's experiencing this stuff in real time so you know it would be nice mm -hmm. did you notice the book i have back there uh not really what what so, is it greg gave me this oh wow that's a really good book. A lot well, of I noticed cards. you did two of the letters in here. <laughs> yeah, it's time for volume two. Yeah. <laughs> he, um, Greg gave it to me for my four-year-old son, so. <laughs> but, yeah, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. So I really, really appreciate it. And hopefully I get a chance to give you a hug in the not-too-long well, future. Because <laughs> we're enough. both in the same borough. <laughs> thanks for having me. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye. Bye.